Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Regicide, a third-party forbidden song campaign by Rinaldo Agostini and published by Exalted Funeral. So this is like an indie game inside an indie game. It's like Indieception, uh, and they were kind enough to send along a complimentary copy to review. So what this is, is a playable campaign set inside the Morkborg universe in Forbidden Psalm, um, providing you with a full sort of like um, set of, I guess like campaign things to track, like you have to feed your dudes, um, and a storyline where you are running ahead of a massive undead horde uh, led by an evil king uh, who is trying to take over the world. So the Graven, uh, Host, I think that's supposed to be host. Hosk, Tosk, the Graven Tosk. From Graven Tosk, he marches on. Forgotten from history, obliterated from the collective consciousness, the Forgotten King rose from his grave with a skeletal horde of immense proportions. The current state of the world displeases him, as no one seems to remember his deeds. It doesn't matter if the apocalypse approaches. This affront is intolerable and needs to be dealt with. His army amasses in the giant cemetery of Graven Tosk. That's what it was. Uh, thousands fall him, ready to march through the Sakarsh or Sarkash towards Grift. And while the dead march on, the soil boils, Black's black wax oozes from it, pushing even more corpses up to the surface, corrupting wells, destroying crops, and starving thousands. Food is scarce, and plenty of deranged individuals are ready to do anything to survive, even if it's only for one more day. And amidst all the chaos, only one thing's certain, before the blackened sun vanishes, uh, vanquishes it all, everyone will remember his name. So the Forgotten King basically is pushing you forward. So how do you play? You're going to create your own sort of core world band, from the core rulebook, you get three meals out of your equipment, and then you're gonna play 12 scenarios, and you can play them solo, co-op, or, um, or versus, and we're gonna be playing them solo through the campaign. Uh, from a narrative standpoint, each scenario is tied tight to, uh, to the one before and or after it, so you play them in sequence, that's what we'll do. Uh, to set up the scenarios, follow the steps described in the core rulebook, and remember, resources are scarce and enemies are everywhere, so trust no one. Uh, it has its own post-game sequence for the campaign, so, with no need to rest or to eat day after day, they march on, leading us to our ruin. You're basically being forced ahead of this giant skeletal undead host, and you're trying to compete with all of the like nameless rabble that are also being displaced by this massive invasion um, for like enough food to survive, and also like just to find you know like uh, all of the like stuff that you normally would want, like looting and treasure, and to buy things. You can trade with the traders. So the big differences between other Forbidden Song games at the end of each game. Uh, you loot D6 plus D4, sorry, 6 plus D4 gold and two meals. You automatically feed two people. You roll your death saves as normal, and then you roll for injuries. And it's broken bones, minus one agility, saddened presence, weak strength, disease toughness, maimed HP, lost a limb, and you have less equipment slots, missing eye, max range uh, for all attacks reduced to three inches, and only a flesh wound is just an injury. So if you get taken out, bad things can happen. Um, if you pass your death save and if you fail, then of course it can be even worse and you are just dead. Uh, then random events will happen and you have to feed your warband in step five. So you have to have enough, you have to have five meals basically per game to feed people and there's a lot of ways to get food, but some of them aren't so nice. Uh, you can sell items to peddlers and other evacuees. They pay half price for weapons and armor. Uh, on page 1450 in the core rulebook, rounded down. You can't sell to the merchant. There is no merchant there. And you can't sell scrolls. Then you gain and spend XP for one for every monster you killed, treasure you collected, Scenario with at least one member of the Warband surviving, models you down and past death saves, and Warband members who die. The Warband can then spend uh, five XP to do one of the following, improve Warband's uh, ability by one, uh, remove a member's injury, remove a flaw, or reroll a flaw, sorry. Not a regular one, or sorry, a regular one, not an undead one. Gain a new feed for a Warband, bring a single Warband member back from the dead, but they gain the undead Warband uh, status, and then you have to roll for the flaw for them, and then hire new party members. Uh, you get them for free, basically for less than five people, and you just roll one up and then reallocate your equipment and buy and move things around. Uh, but every time you go to buy stuff, you uh, have only D4 items available because the apocalypse is happening. And then there's feeding. While we rest, they march. While we starve, they prosper. And against the horde, there can be no victory. So you start with three meals in your equipment stash, and as you saw, you get two after every game. They represent everything necessary for survival, so like food, water, or booze, and they're grouped as a single item that take up no inventory space. After every scenario, you have to feed your warband members and pets. Mercenaries bring their own food, and pet rocks don't need to be fed. <laughs> Consume one meal for every living model in your warband. You can choose to distribute meals as you prefer, but for every model that doesn't get fed in the start of the next scenario, they have D4 uh, hit points missing, basically. And you roll before deployment. If you miss two meals in a row, you die. 
you just die. Uh, there's other ways to get fat. You can get sweet meats. You can harvest it from dead monsters from the core rulebook. Uh, they can be consumed as meals, and you're, it's tolerable. You don't have to roll a morale check for failed harvest rolls. You can get rotten meats. You count as being fried, but you still start with less hit points, and they can't be sold. Useless mouths and mercenaries can be butchered in cold blood during the feed phase, but every cannibalized unit from your group produces D4 meals, and they add their equipment from, uh, to your stash and mark yourself with infamy. As a last resort, pets can be butchered to gain one meal. So you can become a cannibal. You can't uh, consume pet rocks because you can't eat rocks as a meal. You can eat your pets if you want to. Um, and basically, yeah, you, you, you have to be fed. Now, there's other ways of getting meals in the snares and stuff, but if you find a monster that's not undead, you probably want to try and cannibalize it because you're just going to die otherwise if you don't get fed twice. All right, infamy. Even for bandits and cutthroats, there are lines that should not be crossed. A warband that is butchered, useless mouths or mercenaries in cold blood or attacked and killed a down model automatically gains infamy. A warband marked with infamy can't recruit useless mouths or mercenaries. Any of these units still remaining in your warband immediately leave uh, and you become infamous. So some random events have different results for an infamous warband. And infamous warbands don't attract the most stable individuals. From now on, roll twice on the flaws table when you roll to recruit new members. Basic human decency and dignity are hollow words to scum like you. You don't need to test presence to see if you can use a necromantic relic. Uh, and now, a model with the undead status may not be healed in any way, so you can't use healing spells on them. Uh, but you still replenish HP between scenarios. But it's immune to poison, bleeding, and disease, and an undead model doesn't need to consume meals during the feed phase, basically, because you become a zombie. So you can all be zombified at the end of this, too, with experience. Uh, so basically, when you get like a uh, flaw for the undead, they're, they're different from the living people. So you can be like highly damaged, roll twice in the injury table. Clumsy, you fumble on a natural one or two. Unnatural prey, something's wrong with this model. Monsters hit it on DR11 instead of 12. Crawler, you can never move um, twice to do second movements. Putrefied muscles, you can't make crits. Zombified, uh, it still needs to consume meals, but eating rotten meals have no repercussions, and this undead flaw passes to any resurrected model that was downed by zombified models and failed a death save. If you get killed by a zombie in the campaign, you come back as a zombie. Uh, bloated. Because it can't wear armor, its guts spill out on the floor when it's down. The entrails are so pungent, everyone within three suffers minus one of their presence. The rust curse. Any armor woman this model has its value permanently reduced by one, and it's uh, destroyed if it goes to zero. Brain rot, no more stats or feats uh, can't be gained. Missing arms, you get the limb lost injury. Legless torso, regardless of all your previous stats, you have minus four agility because you're getting pulled around by your arms. Oozing wax, you kind of shrouded in darkness, so minus six doll rolls from or against it, unless equipped with a light source. It also cannot be targeted by enemy ranged attacks or spells. And then lost eyes, you're permanently blinded. A pus eruption. Consume a set of bandages in order to participate in the scenario. Crumbling, extra damage when attacked, brittle, uh, ready to turn dust, you automatically fail every death saves. An awful chewer, you don't need to eat, you just like the sound of mastication, you can't harvest dead monsters. And then spectral, it has no equipment except for a single weapon and doesn't get slowed down by terrain. And then destroyed nervous system, it starts every scenario dazed. And creepy, useless mouths require an extra meal as payment to be recruited to your warband, and mercenaries ask for five extra gold. All right, useless mouths. So useless uh, recruitment. During uh, certain events, a warband may be able to recruit one or more useless mouths. You might find somebody in a mission. They count as an additional member of the warband. It can be deployed next to them, uh, next to the normal five models, like a standard warband member. A useless mouth will immediately leave the warband if they're not given a meal during the feed phase. You can't have multiples uh, of any given useless mouth in your warband, and a useless mouth doesn't need to be fed in the feed phase immediately following the recruitment. Equipment, a useless mouth that can't change or sell equipment. If their equipment is destroyed or lost, they automatically strip enough resources together to get it back. And then activation, a useless mouth is deployed like a normal model, and, but activates during the monster phase and follows the usual monster behavior rules. Move useless mouths before other monsters. They will never attack or engage members of the warband that recruited them. This includes mercenaries, pets, and useless mouths, which are ignored when determining the closest model line of sight. A useless mouth will consider any other model as a valid target, including other useless mouths of the same kind recruited as by a rival warband. So basically, you're going to uh, use an action. A warband member not including uh, pets can use an action to guide a useless mouth that's within six. During the next monster activation, you can move it however you desire before, after rolling the distance. And even though a useless mouth acts as a monster, it's not uh, to be considered one for abilities, flaws, weapons, or spells. With a specific effect on monsters, it can't be harvested either. If a useless mouth is down, it dies and can't be revived. You don't get any XP from killing them, but your opponent still gets an XP if they'd kill them. 
Um, and then these are the different uses of mouths. The Hanged Man, so a uh, undead, zombified, poking man with a noose around his neck. A dispossessed villager, and the Forgotten King's Horde took everything from them, and they're just a dude with a pitchfork. Um, and you get multiples. A uh, disfigured monk, <laughs> a horrifying disease, no weapons, no armor. A death hunter with a gravedigger's shovel, so you're basically like an undead life. Uh, you're basically a gravedigger that's going to like murder all the zombies. A greased dead knight, a knight that's trying to like save everybody, but uh, his armor basically gets, every time he gets hit and damaged, his armor goes down by one. He doesn't need a meal, um, but he gets the fir first time, he basically stays for one game, and then after the game, you feed him, but he then distributes the food to the poor and leaves to go help somebody else. The worst, what a pathetic sight to behold. Uh, coward, Desmarat, sort of the monster phase, if he has no friendly war members within six. And then destroyed stomach, eats rotten meals with no repercussions. A feral kid who fights with a femur, um, he's incredibly agile and moves three to six, uh, drop in the nose. And a wretched noble, so basically a nobleman who, um, Starts with four items, an annoying dog, an ancestral blade, a blue blood dagger, and a basilisk tithe. That's cool. Uh, so those are all the useless mods you can recruit. And then you get your special relics. I don't want to spoil these too much on a new treasure table. Because we'll see them in the campaign, obviously, and you guys can check them out. And then uh, 2d8, you, one do, you being the 10s, random events that happen after every game. So there's a random event that takes place after the game ends when you do your like post-game sequence. New bad guys, you get zombies, bone hunters, crawling supplicants, dead riders, executioners, uh, the impermanent, a ghost, a skeletal general, skeletal musician, bannerman, and skeleton, and then victims, these are, replace the, um, they follow the standard monster rules, but like bandits, peasants, starving dogs, prophets of doom, and then the forgotten king himself, and then into the scenarios. Okay, so I don't want to go through and do... Uh, a, a review of the scenarios, but they're all very cool and they're all supposed to be done in o order, basically. So what I want to do is I want to make my warband for this on camera again. So I'm going to use all the stuff that's in here to make the warband. So, um, standard format, right? I've got all my rule books here. I'm going to use the... So I've got five models I want to use. The perfect like set of models for this, basically, is going to be my miniatures from Curse City. So I'm going to use them as a warband. I picked five that I like. Uh, we're going to roll for their names, right? So you have my, my, my Witch Hunter, uh, my Knight, my Dwarf with the Crossbow and Axe, my Big Boy, the Ogre, and then a Wizard, right? Because I have to have at least one Spellcaster with a scroll. And I'm going to roll, I'm going to use the new Forbidden Psalm name table, because I haven't actually used it yet, uh, and get my D100 more names of the soon-to-be-dead, which I think is fantastic. So let's roll up and see what the first guy's name is. So I'll go with my leader, which will be the Witch Hunter. He's the survivor here, and I'll use my D100. Uh, 100, cool, Godless. Oh my God, <laughs> his name's Godless. I forgot to get a pencil. That would be useful, Ash. There we go. <sighs> so his name is Godless. Should I just stop there? We'll see what the second one is. Maybe I'll just, I'll do it again afterwards. Godless 61. Godless X. Okay, that's that sounds like a new metal band from the early 2000s. Godless X is my witch hunter. <laughs> cool. Uh, we'll do the ogre next, his best friend who follows him everywhere. His name is 44. Mm. Oh no, I should do the type. No, his name was Godless. And then 64 is... The childlike. Godless, I'm going to stick with Godless X. So 44 is Frail. Okay, because he's an ogre. That makes sense. Frail 76. The muscle. <laughs> frail the muscle. <laughs> oh my god. It's off to a great start. So Frail the muscle. Maybe it's pronounced Frail. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the knight. She's the one keeping everybody together. 28. Her name is Mausling. And then 19. The deranged. <laughs> I like it. For all the muscle, Mausling the deranged. Godless X, the witch hunter. Uh, then my dwarf is going to be... Oh no, I was 10. It was Alexi, Alexi X. <laughs> Ale so it would have been actually Alexi the Childlike would have been my Witch Hunter. That's okay. Now I've rolled Godless. 
I just realized I rolled 10. Alexi, or I rolled zero one. Aura, actually is what it was. Yeah, it was Aura. Or the childlike. <laughs> Although I do like, so now Godless is gonna be the next one, which is the dwarf. His name's just Godless. Maybe because he's a dwarf, and then his surname is Five. Godless the meat failure. <laughs> I don't even know what to say with these names. The last ones were kind of okay. And then my wizard, 77. Uh, 77 is <laughs> Nizawa. <laughs> mm, 79. Nizala the Wren. Maybe I'll roll names and then assign models. Um, Aura the Childlike, Frail the Muscle, Mousling the Deranged, and Nizala the Wren. Godless the Meat Failure. <laughs> I feel like Godless the Meat Failure shouldn't be the dwarf. All right, I, I did what I said. Frail the Muscle, Frail the Muscle. He's an ogre. Mousling the Deranged is the knight. Godless the Meat Failure is the dwarf. And Nezawa the Red is the wizard. So then I have to pick my three stat lines, or from my two stat lines for everybody, right, to start off with. And those stat lines are either plus three, my, plus one, and then zero minus three, or plus two, plus two, minus one, minus two. So I think for my Witch Hunter, I'll do plus two, plus two. So I'm gonna do plus two, he's gonna have a gun. So plus two presence plus two agility, and then he'll be minus one toughness and minus two strength. Uh, he's gonna have a hit points then of seven, because he's eight minus one. Uh, Frail the muscle, my ogre, I'm gonna do plus three for his toughness, plus one for his strength, and then he'll be zero for his agility and minus three for his presence, because he's dumb. And that makes him 11 hit points. Uh, Mousing the deranged, the knight, I'll give her the plus two plus two. I'm gonna give her strength and agility and then minus one toughness and minus two presence, which will give her seven hit points as well. Godless the meat failure, my dwarf. <laughs> I'm gonna give him plus two toughness, plus two presence, minus one strength and minus two agility. And that'll make his movement three because he's minus two agility, right? Yes. Yes, I think it's agility is five minus your, where is it? Move, actions, uh, five plus your agility, yeah. So he'll be movement three, basically. Uh, false injuries, that's armor. His toughness, though, will be 10. And then Azala the Ren, we're gonna give plus three to presence plus one to agility, and then minus two to strength, and minus one to toughness, he'll also have seven. And then movement will be, for this one, plus two, so he'll be movement seven, uh, plus zero, so movement five for Frail the Muscle, agility movement seven for Mousing the Deranged, Godless the Meat Failure will be movement three, because he's a dwarf, and then movement six for Nazal of the Ren. Sweet. All right, so that stuff's done. So now I think there's a new set of flaws in here, and we're gonna use this one for strengths and flaws. And pets too. Uh, I don't necessarily need a pet right this second. So where is a flintlock pistol, a musket? Here we go, new flaws. All right, so it's D100. So for the flaw for Aura the Childlike, 88. Scared of dying. <laughs> That's fair. Scared of dying. I mean, you're being chased by a giant undead horde. That makes sense. And what does scared of dying do? Uh, scared of dying. Oh, they're presented together. Sorry, that's right. So the new ones were... Scared of dying is any warband... When any Warband members die, they auto-fail morale check. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Uh, for Frail the Muscle, the Ogre, 21. He's got greasy hands. He's not great at hitting. And then for Mousling the Deranged, 16. Putrid Smell. She hasn't taken that armor off in a while. For Godless the Meat Failure, 63. <laughs> I'm not going to get tired of saying that. He's a loner. I mean, obviously he is. And then for Nazal the Ren, 93. One foot in the grave. If downed, auto fails death saves. I mean, he's old. All right, new feats. Uh, so for the first one, or the childlike, uh, 11. Gains cowardly, sweet. <laughs> That's from the core book. Uh, for frail the muscle, 11 again, also cowardly. Yup. I mean, we're being chased by the undead. Uh, 67 for housing the deranged. Comes up with Lucky Goblin, foot, Lucky Goblin foot, uh, cool, sweet. I think that's a reroll, if I remember correctly. Uh, for Godless the Meat Failure, 30. Uh, that is hard to see, ah, he's short. And then finally for uh, Nazal the Wren, 98. Meathead. <laughs> Sweet. That makes sense. My meat-headed wizard. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right, new scrolls. Starts with two, I believe. Uh, so 78. That one, oh, it's D44, sorry, it's 2D4. So I'll have the pink die be the high dice. Mm, wait, what's D44 here? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yes, okay. Uh, 11, Hope's Last Breath. What's that one do? Hope's Last Breath uh, is the clean scroll, sorry. And then the unclean scroll. That's from the core book. The unclean scroll. Oh, God, I can't pick these up. Come on. There we go. Uh, 33 is going to be Death Becomes Them. And then I got 50 gold crowns to spend on equipment. So let's see what we have here first for flaws and feats. So flaws, <laughs> uh, Scared Dying already looked at. Greasy Hands is minus one AG. Uh, then, which makes sense because he's an ogre. Mousing the Deranged has Putrid Smell, which is minus one Presence. Then meet Godless the Meat Failure's loner ability. Minus one to all tasks of two inches of friendly model. Uh, and then one foot in the grave. Oh yeah, so auto pass. Auto fail death saves. All right, my sweet, sweet perks, which don't sound like perks, most of them. Cowardly, which I have twice. Minus one morale, but plus one agility. Which makes a movement eight and movement six for, um, movement six for uh, Frail the Muscle. And that makes him agility three. And agility plus one. Uh, then, so plus one AG, minus one morale. Uh, then Lucky Goblin Foot, which is, can we roll a die per scenario, but minus one equipment slot. Exactly what I thought it was. I just didn't know it took equipment. Godless the Meat Failure is hard to see. Uh, can't be targeted by ranged attacks and cannot make ranged attacks itself. 
Oh, okay. Well, he's got a crossbow, so that's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> we'll just call that something else, I guess. <laughs> Can't be shot. Can't shoot. <laughs> he's just using that axe, I guess. And then Meathead. Oh, Meathead. Plus two strength, minus one presence. <laughs> Okay, good. Well, he's now strength uh, zero and presence plus two. I guess he's a lover and a fighter. <laughs> so he's presence plus two and then strength zero. Sick. All right, well, there's, there's our stuff. And then what do our scrolls do? So our clean scrolls and our gross scrolls. Hope Sloth Brass heals D6 HP to one model within one. Heal D6 HP. And then one inch range. Death becomes them. Uh, that is... Bones them bones. Oh, maybe it's not in Maybe it is in the new book. Death becomes them. Death becomes them. Uh, I don't see it. it. Must be in this one. I didn't see it in there though. Death becomes them. Target must make a presence test on a failure. They become undead and get the undead subtype. <laughs> okay. Mm. And that one's got a twelve-inch range as standard. All right, there we go. Wow. That's exciting. So there's all of our stuff done. We got uh, 50 points to spend now on equipment. And I want to use the, oh, so I want to use some of the new equipment here because there's black powder weapons, which are super cool. So let's have a look. Footlock pistol, cannon, trident, sling. I want a tower shield, full plate. She's wearing full plate. So that's armor four, 50 gold. That's all my gold. So I can't really use that. Uh, pet armor for your pet. <laughs> Can I be using any pet? Improvised armor, comfy socks, tower shield, cannons, muskets, muskets. So damage D10, cost 20. Well, we're buying it because he's got it. So he's got his musket, which is D10. Uh, five ammo. Reload, explode. <laughs> And then he also needs his little hatchet. So that cost me 20 already. Oh my God. This guy's gonna have no armor. <laughs> and then his little hatchet, so he's got a melee weapon. Uh, we'll buy him a little Warhammer, because it's a Warhammer, I think. Yeah, it is a Warhammer. And it is Warhammer's strength. He's strength minus two. Is there an agility weapon I wanna give him? Like a club? What's agility? Rapiers, short swords, and daggers. I'll give him a short sword. I think he's got a short sword, actually. Oh, he's got a long sword in his back. Not my bad. I uh, will just call it a short sword. There we go. So short sword. And that's going to cost him two gold. So we're at 22 gold. Uh, and the short sword is agility. And it's D6. So he's got a musket, which is presence. That's right. Uh, and that's his two weapons, which take two of his slots. We're not going to give him anything else because we spent almost half our money on that guy. Uh, Frail the Ogre is going to have a, we call that a Morning Star. Yeah, I think we call that a Morning Star. And we'll just buy him that and maybe some armor, some medium armor. Oh, that's a lot of our gold though. So we're at 22. Medium armor is... 10, so 32, and a, f and a morning star is 39. We have 11 left. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> so light armor, I guess, for two. I guess they all get light armor. So 24, 20, uh, sorry, 31, 32, 33. 33 for some light armor. And then his morning star is seven, and it's a strength weapon. It's a D8. And it's cruel. Yeah, cruel and crit days. And 
And he's got light armor. Which is armor value one, one. All right, or the childlike and frail the muscle are done. And we've spent, like I said, four, 11 plus 20 is 31 plus that short sword, 32, 33 gold. So 33, she needs 43 heavy armor, I think. Or, you know, medium armor at least, because she's wearing like full plate. Medium armor, 43, and then I could buy her a sword. For 46, yeah, I think that's what we're getting here. So 33, a sword takes her to 36, 46 for medium armor. It makes her armor two, and then a sword, which is D6, and it's strength. Uh, and then I've got four left to buy both these guys something. Uh, which looks like it's going to be for this guy. He's got agility. He's got presence and toughness. A makeshift weapon is free. Well, the staff obviously for the wizard costs one. So we'll give him a staff and that's it. And the staff is strength, which he's strength zero and does D four damage, I think. Yep. And that costs one. So at adding up again, sorry, 20, 22 for light armor, 24 for the short sword, uh, then, and then the light armor is 34, 44 for the light armor, wait, I'm wrong, 20, 30 for light armor, I think I've already spent all my money, <laughs> 30 for light armor, the short sword makes it 32, 42, 49. Oh my god, I spent all my gold already. Yeah, the musket takes me way over. I can't do the musket, I don't think. Oh, that sucks. Or just no armor, because I'm at 39. No armor for the ogre. These guys both get light armor. <laughs> so no armor for these two. Uh, light armor here. You have so little money in the beginning. So no armor on anybody. We're just going to buy their weapons to start off with, Ash, and then see how much you have left. So musket's 20, short sword is 22, morning star's 29, sword is 32, staff is 34. This guy's just going to have an axe, hand axe, which is... Three, so 37 and that means I can give her light armor for 47 and that's it I'll have three in the stash okay hand axe I just need to remove all their armor which I did she's got armor one because she's got light armor and I think we got three meals And he's got a staff, he's got a hand axe, which is D8, and uses strength, which he's bad at. Sweet, there we go. So what should this warband be called? Uh, well, they've, they, they're on the run, basically. And they're on the run. I had the loss as my last warband from Draven Tosk. Uh, no sleep till Brooklyn, till Frisk, where, where the, what's the place, Grift. Uh, they're trying to get to Grift, so that's where they're trying to get to. So what should I call this if they're trying to get to Grift? Let's call them... I don't know. Uh, the Grift Unit? No, we're going to call them... We had the Lost. Let's do the... The Grave Tosk 5. It's like Jurassic 5, except not. <laughs> so the Grave Toss 5 on their way to Frisk, or on their way to Frisk? Grift. Uh, and they've got zero XP, and sorry, I've got three gold remaining in my stash. And so there we go. 
we're into it. So I'm going to have next week uh, an episode for you to watch of uh, Regicide. So we're going to kick off the first campaign game um, with a grave robbery. That's when we discover that the dead are rising. Uh, and I'm excited for this, this Indieception, indie game publication inside an indie game publication uh, of a complete campaign system for one of my favorite games of the last couple years, Forbidden Psalm. So uh, big thanks for um, Exalted Funeral, of course, uh, and um, Ronaldo sending this along, and for you guys for watching. We'll see you for more of the Forbidden Psalm battle reports in the future. Then I'm Ash. Have a day. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.